let's talk a bit more about the Hamiltonian. Recall that the total 1D mechanical energy of a system can be written as the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, plus the potential energy, uh, which I'll write v of x here. It's useful to rewrite this in terms of the momentum, where the momentum is m times v, so that this would be p squared over 2m plus v of x. This is commonly called the Hamiltonian. So we call the total energy also the Hamiltonian. And the term Hamiltonian comes from uh, topics in advanced classical mechanics. Uh, we're not going to go into the details here. We're just going to borrow the name. OK, so recall in quantum mechanics, we said that momentum is represented by an operator. And that operator is p hat h bar over i partial partial x so that the hamiltonian becomes minus h bar squared over 2m the second derivative with respect to x plus v of x where you just put p hat in for p above of course this only makes sense when you operate it on something in particular if you operate it on a wave function since it is after all an operator so h hat operated on psi sub n of x uh, is h bar squared over 2m, second derivative of psi sub n, plus v times psi sub n. Hey, but this is just the time-independent Schrodinger equation. We've seen that before, and we know that that must then be equal to e sub n times psi sub n, as long as psi is a solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So we have h hat psi is equal to e psi. This is why we called E the energy when we were talking about the time-independent Schrodinger equation, because it's connected to H, the Hamiltonian. Notice that this is an eigenvalue equation, uh, something you might recall from linear algebra. The matrix M times a vector is equal to an eigenvalue lambda times a vector from linear algebra. Uh, and so we have something very similar. We would say psi sub n is an energy eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian, and then e sub n is the eigenvalue. Let's talk about expectation values of the Hamiltonian. So if we take the expectation value of the Hamiltonian, we'd write that as psi n star h hat psi dx to the integral. Um, by the way, we're only assuming a single psi sub n for now. Well, h times psi is just e times psi. And so then we can pull that e outside of the integral. And then we have the integral of psi sub n squared dx. But that integral is just equal to 1 because the wave function is normalized. And so the expectation value for h is just e sub n, the energy of the wave function. By a similar set of reasoning, the expectation value of h squared will give you e sub n squared. So the variance sigma h squared, which is the expectation value of h squared minus expectation value of h all squared, uh, just gives us 0. That tells us, since the variance is 0, that there's no spread in the energy for the wave function psi sub n. Uh, if you make a measurement of the energy of that wave function, you will always measure e sub n every time. There's no variance at all. But what if you do have a mixture of different psi sub n states? So in particular, if your total wave function is uh, a sum of c1 psi 1 plus c2 psi 2, where psi 1 and psi 2 have different energies. So then h hat times psi gives you c1 h hat times psi 1 plus c2 h hat times psi 2. Each of those is individually an energy eigenfunction. So we get e1 psi 1 plus e2 psi 2. But notice that this is not equal to some total constant times the total initial wave function. So our wave function is no longer an energy eigenstate or an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. If you were to measure the energy of psi tot, 
what would you get? Well, in this case now, you will find energy E1 with some probability given by C sub 1 absolute value squared. And similarly, you'll find E sub 2 with a probability of absolute value of C sub 2 squared. 